Hi everyone, this is Elsie Kearns, your Chaos to Clarity coach, and we have a full moon and a super moon tonight. So don't miss getting a chance to sit under it for a few minutes. Tonight I have a colleague, Lucia De Simone, and she's going to tell us a little bit about her story and what she's headed for this Wednesday, which is pretty big situation. And we're all behind her 100%. So I want to welcome you, Lucia. And uh, I have a few questions before you tell your story. Okay? Sounds good. Thank you so much, Elsie, for having me on and giving me this opportunity to share some information and some research that I've done and um, obviously share my story and my, my journey. So before you do that, I want you to share with us and tell us how you fell in love with those crystal bowls and <laughs> found healing. Oh, wow. Uh, well, it, it's a few years ago. I was uh, a vendor at a health or a holistic expo, and there was a gentleman that was walking around with different sound healing tools, crystal singing bowls, and a crystal singing pyramid. And I had never seen anything like it before. And he looked a little bit like one of the wizards from Lord of the Rings. So a very interesting character. Uh, you know, had the long white beard and um, those fun tie-dye pants. And he stopped by our, our table a couple of times. My husband was with me and I said, what is that? And he, you know, would use it and I would feel the, the vibration and, uh, you know, feel the, the difference in how uh, I was feeling just from the few moments of being exposed to these tools. And I eventually went to, uh, he was actually in our area from Arizona. He, travels the country teaching four-day master sound healing classes. And he was in the New Jersey area offering his workshops. And he said, why don't you come to our student clinic? And at that time, it was at Blue Moon, and uh, I think they're in Runnymede. Um, and my husband and I went and uh, we each had an opportunity to get uh, an individual session with uh, the students that were going through the program at the time. And so I had two students working on me using the crystal singing bowls and other tools and doing some energy work. And uh, I remember getting home and saying, I have never had these <laughs> this quite this feeling of just floating on a cloud and I was just uh you know really at a loss for words of how to put how I was feeling in the experience and you know put words um put words into that and uh you know, to make a long story short, because I know we have a limited amount of time, I um, exchanged information with one of the students and we became friends and um, my friend Megan Walker and uh, mm -hmm. she uh, opened my eyes and my world even more to the crystal saint and bowls and sound healing and, um, and uh, fast forward uh, probably about six months and I was being called to go to Sedona and uh, our the instructor was actually teaching in Sedona um, and I was getting the messages that that's where I needed to be. Uh, so that's, <laughs> that's where I ended up in the, the magical land of Sedona. Really all of Arizona has uh, amazing energy and um, had uh, quite the opportunity to go through my sound healing training um, in that area and uh, and bring that home and share it with our community. Um, so that's uh, make a long story short. <laughs> well, I have experienced your evenings at Yoga for Living, uh, where you know you take us through that 
uh, yoga nidra, I think it's called, and just so relaxing. Uh, Rhonda leads us through the body, and you're playing the bowls and those chimes, and it truly is a magical experience. Yeah. Really amazing, uh, and just such an honor to hear how other people respond. Um, you know, a lot of times when we have the, the Yoga Nidra event is on Friday nights, so it's a really wonderful way to um, melt away any stress or, um, you know, any low, emo low vibration emotions from the week and move into the weekend with a kind of a clean plate. Um, but also, uh, you know, one of the things that really has, uh, stuck with me about sound healing is my personal benefit and how it has helped me drastically address um, and decrease my anxiety. Um, I think that that's what it, you asked me the question, what, how did I fall in love with sound healing? I think that's really the thing, you know, it, it wasn't, um, another prescription. Um, it was, uh, you know, something that, um, not only works for me, but something that I can then share with other people, um, in either group setting or, uh, through an individual session. Well, I have enjoyed any time I've experienced it and recommended it to others. And I agree with you about the fact that it just releases that stress and anxiety, perfect for the end of the week. But I also want to give you a chance to talk about your situation. You're faced with some serious long surgery this Wednesday. And I would like you to share with people just what this is all about so they can understand that we can all support you. Absolutely. So going back a little bit um, to August of 2018, I went to a concert and, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, what concert was it? If people are curious. It was a freestyle concert. So a lot of uh, freestyle artists from the 90s, there were the Jets, Taylor Dane, Stevie B. Uh, and after the concert, just like, and it was an indoor stadium, just like a lot of other um, indoor events, loud events. Uh, my hearing was a little bit fuzzy afterwards. And a few days later, my hearing still didn't come back on the right side. So I started treating myself for earwax, ear blockage, just over the counter things essential oils, all the holistic protocols. And when I wasn't getting any results, um, have been doing that for about a week and not seeing really any relief, I decided to go to an ENT. So the ENT said, oh, you have just trauma from the concert and it's something called eustachian tube dysfunction where the, the tube actually just kind of hasn't fully opened back up yet. And he wanted to write me a script for steroids to help with the inflammation. And I didn't sit right with me in my gut intuitively. I, I declined and um, he gave me some manual exercises I could do at home, like closing your nostrils and breathing out to help mm -hmm. when you're on a plane to help open up the the ears. And he said, you know, over time, it should naturally open up and come back. So I dealt with that for quite some time. And a few months later, started experiencing numbness on the right side of my face, uh, into uh, my cheek and my tongue. Hearing still didn't come back. It hadn't gotten any better, any worse. It remained the same. And uh, progressing again a few months after that, I started experiencing some balance issues where I just felt off uh, randomly um, here and there. And so I went to the concert in August of 2018. My hearing didn't come back and uh, started having family members pick up on, hey, you know, you really can't hear what I'm saying to you when I'm sitting on your right side or when we're in a busy place like a restaurant um, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, on that side. 
and you really should go and get that checked out. <laughs> so after just thinking, relating the numbness, the balance back to the hearing, not coming back yet, uh, you know, I'm 40, I'm older, it's just going to take a little bit more time. I said to myself, it was starting to get a little frustrated with the numbness uh, because it kind of feels like you have Novocaine um, and it's 24 seven. So I decided to go back to the ENT and that was in November of last year. So November, 2019, explained the new symptoms. And he looked at me and said, I need to write you a script for an MRI. I think you might have what's called an acoustic neuroma. And I, uh, just felt like I had been hit by a truck. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, he's telling me it's a tumor in the inner ear. And um, I'm thinking, you know, this is, I, I don't agree with him. And, um, you know, how can that be? Uh, so I had my MRI done on, um, on Christmas Eve. So December 24th. And didn't get the results until December 30th, but um, spent, you know, the holidays with family and let them know kind of what was going on. And uh, we all prayed, sent intention that uh, the MRI would come back clean. Um, but lo and behold, the ENT was right. So on December 30th, I did receive the results that I do have an acoustic neuroma on the right side of my ear. And I'm just going to read a definition. So I, I know that I'm explaining it in the technical terms, but um, the anatomy of an acoustic neuroma, it's also known as a vestibular schwannoma. Uh, so sometimes you'll hear them, um, you know, uh, acoustic neuroma, schwannoma, same, same thing. Um, it is a benign growth. So that's the good news. Um, they're typically benign tumors. And it arises on the eighth cranial nerve leading from the brain to the inner ear. So this nerve has two distinct parts. One is the auditory, that's my hearing loss. And the other is sending balance information um, from, uh, to the brain from the inner ear. Now, my tumor is a moderate size, so it's also pressing on the facial nerve, and it is compressing my brainstem and my cerebellum. Um, so when we talked about treatment with uh, the specialist that I met with, there's really three types of treatment. There's watch and wait, um, which I was doing for many years <laughs> without knowing. These are very slow-growing tumors. Uh, so possibly 15, 20, maybe even 30 years, this has been, um, you know, in my life without our knowledge. And, uh, the second option is radiation. Uh, radiation is really going to stunt the growth, stop the growth of the tumor. Um, it can also cause the tumor to swell. Um, and that can even last for a few years. So that really wasn't an option for me based on my size tumor. It is uh, on the moderate large size. Uh, so it's a 2.5, three is typically large. Um, so it's right on the cusp. The last option for treatment is surgery, which is Elsie mentioned on Wednesday, this Wednesday, March 11th. I will be having surgery. Um, there's three different types of surgery with acoustic neuroma, three different approaches. One is called middle fossa, uh, which is typically for a smaller tumor. There's also retrosigmoid, which is just a different approach of how they go in to uh, remove the tumor. The type of surgery I'll be having is called trans lab. That's short for a very long word, uh, but what they do in that procedure is they'll take a little bit of belly fat and they'll put that in um, to decrease the chance of cerebral spinal fluid leaks. Um, that happens to be a risk with um, any type of acoustic neuroma and I think for most brain surgery. Sure. So yes, the big day um, countdown is two days from now. And I uh, 
chose to have um, my team is at NYU Langone in New York City, um, Dr. Golfinos and Dr. Roland. They have been working together and really specializing in treating acoustic neuromas for 25 years. So mm -hmm. they're really um, experts in their field. Uh, not only do they have amazing credentials uh, on paper, but they are just very compassionate and very approachable uh, people. And Dr. Golfinos is a neurosurgeon. He's actually the Department of Neurosurgery. He's the chair. Um, so uh, bedside manner is great. They also both have a sense of humor, which is wonderful. Um, and I feel that I'm in very, very capable hands. Um, everything's going to be absolutely fine. And we are hoping the goal of the surgery is to get the entire tumor out while keeping in mind that we need to preserve the uh, facial nerve. So uh, it will be completely in their hands to determine how aggressive to be. Um, so I'm not left with permanent facial nerve damage, which would mean I would have some drooping. Um, usually uh, you have a crooked smile or there might be facial drooping. Um, so they, uh, you know, with all of that experience behind them, they'll really know how uh, aggressive to be and, and when to, you know, um, if they need to leave a little bit of, uh, of tumor and hopefully that would die off, but we're going to get the whole thing. So we're not even going to go there. <laughs> not even going to go there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to just say Karen Bailey sent a message here, said that she's thinking of you, Lucia. Um, she's thanks for joining us, Karen. Well, that is very well explained because I haven't heard you give as much clear detail before. But I know that since this has all happened, you've also been doing a lot of research as to what might be something compatible, holistic uh, for people that are struggling with this. I know you looked at support groups. So tell us some of the things that you found uh, that will be helpful. Yeah, you know, there. what I first found, and I was a little surprised that there, there just isn't a whole lot out there. Um, now, acoustic neuromas only represent about 7% of all brain tumors. So it is considered rare. About one in 100,000 people are diagnosed. So I started looking into, of course, support groups. And a national support group that I found is the Acoustic Neuroma Association. So they actually sent me an amazing um, patient kit with all kinds of, there's brochures, and it actually outlines all the treatment options. It has great illustrations. <laughs> um, the definition that I read to you all and uh, there are newsletters and there's actually a website you can go on to and a, a, a chat room or message thread. Um, and there's a page, a couple pages they sent to me of um, other patients that have gone through treatment and really outline a lot of information about their age, the type of treatment, um, how, what their age was when they went through treatment, uh, if they have any kind of hearing needs and, and so on. I mean, it's uh, a very extensive uh, piece of exchange, information exchange. Um, so that's the Acoustic Neuroma Association. So they're nationwide. And I also found a New Jersey support group um, and the president, as soon as I um, you know connected with them, the president said, let's set up a time to talk. And uh, she had also had uh, the same type of procedure I had uh, just several years ago. Um, technology has really come a long way, oh boy. So, uh, you know, she's really been an amazing resource for me, um, helped to put my nerves at ease several times, uh, you know, when um, the things were getting a little, uh, a little hairy with, uh, insurance and other things popping up mm -hmm. in the 
people uh, in this whole journey. Um, but she also put me in contact with some of the patients that had had the same medical team that I did. Uh, so it helped me make a decision uh, as far as which team I wanted to, to go with for the procedure. So um, as far as holistic things, uh, you know, it's, it's been a lot of research. Um, some uh, I've been, you know, getting information from friends and other practitioners <laughs> in our tribe that have said, you know, this, this will be helpful. Like uh, Kyle, uh, dear friend Kyle with Back to Nature, um, he forges uh, chaga. Um, so yeah. chaga is a wonderful medicinal mushroom and creating a tea from that has anti-tumor properties. And I was drinking two cups a day. And uh, using uh, essential oil um, every night on my spine and my feet um, and creating a blend, again, that has those anti-tumor properties uh, like sandalwood and frankincense. And uh, getting back into the gym. Um, so once I figured out what my treatment was going to be and it would be surgery, I said, I need to prepare myself for some endurance. <laughs> um, yeah you know, be prepared for a marathon on the operating table. Um, so just building up my strength, as most of you may know, I'm a massage therapist by trade. And uh, in addition to doing sound healing, um, so I'm pretty physical at my, my job, uh, but I wanted to really build some strength up and started weightlifting and uh, really doing some more cardio over the last month. Um, and uh, really focusing on what I'm eating. I'm a really good eater. I mostly eat organic, gluten-free, dairy-free, uh, and really limit my meat. Um, and the meat, when I do eat it, is it's organic, it's uh, grass-fed, it's free range. It's, you know, all the, the really um, great quality meats that are, um, I try to get them a little bit more local, um, fish to whatever's in season. So really, uh, taking a good hard look at, um, uh, my food intake and eliminating as much as I could, any kind of sugar, um, even if it's coconut sugar, cane sugar, the nat the natural stuff, uh, that has, um, you know, I found that that actually, uh, suppresses immune system and, um, it, it can, uh, you know, do more harm than, than good. And I wanted to really make sure, especially now that I'm two less than two weeks out from my surgery, um, you know, 14 days before, uh, the 11th, they asked me to stop any kind of supplements that I was taking. And that included like a probiotic, which, uh, our immune system is generated in the gut. So I had to stop my probiotic. I've been eating a lot more yogurt, uh, to, just to get the, the probiotic in the cultures somehow. They said yogurt was okay. So I said, okay, good. Something I can have something. Um, and, uh, the chaga, I had to get you know, stop taking that. Even herbal tea using topical essential oils because some of the essential oils actually have uh, properties that increase your blood flow. So the last thing you want uh, operating room table is, um, you know, more blood flow than you would normally have. So um, found that too. But uh, going back to some more of the holistic stuff I was doing, um, you know, really trying to focus on um, body work. So I actually have a appointment for acupuncture tomorrow and, um, chanting came into my life. So as a sound healer, I've, um, kind of, you know, had a little bit of experience with chanting here and there. Um, if you, you've come to maybe one of my events, uh, where we've used the Bija mantras, mm -hmm. uh, to really help and uh, rebalance and open up the chakras. 
uh, you know, we've had really amazing experience with uh, those, those workshops. Um, but I had a couple uh, times where I was at classes where it was, um, it was chanting and it was a really powerful uh, experience to have that, you know, individual vibration going through your body. And then, uh, just take a moment to hear the, uh, community, uh, that's around, around us in the circle that is all lending their energy, um, and how that goes, that is going out into the universe and raising the, the vibration of our planet and our communities. Um, so chanting and, essential oils and exercise and really clean eating. The doctor said, uh, it was funny because uh, when I asked the doctor on Friday, I said, what else can I do to support my body between now and Wednesday? And basically he said everything that I have been doing. He said guided imagery. Uh, he said, eat your broccoli, like eat, eat well, eat your vegetables, um, you know, keep, keep the stress under wraps. Um, the other thing that I had uh, come across is called a, it's a program called Prepare for Surgery Now, Heal Faster. And this is a program developed by uh, Dr. Peggy Huddleston. And I'm very fortunate to um, have enrolled in that. There's, uh, it is a funded program at NYU, but it's something that's available nationwide. You can even order books and CDs on Amazon. Um, if your healthcare facility doesn't offer it, or if you're just interested in checking it out. Uh, but it is a five-step program, um, that helps to really put you in that place of deep relaxation. Um, that increases your T cells, which are the cells responsible for your immune system. Um, so, uh, I went through over the phone, um, the workshop with, uh, a nurse at NYU and, um, we talked about, you know, envisioning different parts of my recovery from the moment that I am on the operating table. Um, the doctors are actually going to, or the nurses will share affirmations with me, uh, while I'm on the table mm -hmm. and. Uh, to the moment that I wake up and recovery in the ICU till, um, you know, months down the road, what each step will look like for me and what, how I envision that. Uh, and going through, there's a, a couple MP3s that I've loaded onto my phone um, that are uh, like a guided meditation. Um, and also I was mentioning to Elsie before we got started, once I find out the time of my surgery, I'm going to post that on Facebook because one of the last steps of the program is asking my support group to share in envisioning a beautiful blanket of red wrapping me in peace and love as I go in for my procedure. And the nurse actually shared that she's had several patients that have gone through this program who have mentioned just a really overwhelming sense of peace wash over them uh, when their support group is, is sending that transmission. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the things that I've been doing. Well, you certainly have disciplined yourself to <laughs> carry through with all of these possibilities in advance. And I know that our support group here and Rhonda at Yoga for Living has begun this great GoFundMe. And I made a small uh, link for it, which is a long, long link. But uh, we have that up on the screen. And also, if anyone is interested, they can go there and, and donate because this is, uh, I know, a very expensive procedure. And also just going back and forth to New York for the visits and the pre-testing and staying overnight. Uh, New York is an exciting city, but clearly an expensive one. So we'll all be, you know, working with you in that way. And you have such a huge community. So I just want to remind everybody that link GoFundMe is up there. 
if you would like to follow through with it and uh, support Lucia in that way. But certainly your prayers and thoughts, we know how powerful that is. So Lucia, uh, we just, I'll see you tomorrow when you get your acupuncture, but is there um, anything else that you would like to share with us? Yeah, a couple of things real quickly. So Elsie mentioned the GoFundMe. So thank you so much to those that have made a contribution and anyone that's considering um, offering a donation. Uh, my surgery should be, it's estimated to be about five to six hours long, um, as long as everything goes smoothly, which I know that it will. So that's good news, less for the body to process and anesthesia to be eliminated. Uh, my recovery is about four to five months long. So um, mm -hmm. I'm very limited in what I can do. Um, so we'll be down to one income in our house and the GoFundMe is really going to be so helpful. Like Elsie said, with the medical costs, the transportation, um, back and forth, you know, I have to go back in 10 days to, uh, 10 or 14 days after my surgery, get my sutures removed and there'll be follow-up appointments and more MRIs to keep an eye on things. Uh, also the, just the bills, so our mortgage and um, gas and electric. So it, it all is so helpful and so appreciated as our prayers and um, send all of those appreciate. Right. The other thing I wanted to mention is, um, you know, I've had a lot of people say to me, oh. you have such a great attitude about this. Uh, you're the happy patient that I've seen. Um, yeah. I, 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 want a, I want a webinar. One of the, um, several years ago that uh, has really stuck with me is uh, the movie The Secret. And, you know, we get back what we put out into the universe, whether that's, you know, an actual material thing or even our emotions and our attitude. And we talked about sound healing and one of the, the great sound healers in this country, Three Trees, uh, taught us that sound healing is, you know, the tools that we use, the crystal singing bowls, the drums, the chimes, they're intention amplifiers. So we're getting back what we're putting out there. And I have the intention of putting out love and peace and joy and I'm just so fortunate in getting all of that back um, in my emotional state, but also through all of you. Um, an overwhelming amount of support. Um, I just feel so uplifted and carried by all of the wonderful people in our tribe, our community, um, of course, the angelic realm, but um, all of you. So thank you for bottom of my heart and my family thanks you my very large family <laughs> <laughs> and I I just love you all thank mm -hmm. you so much and you know that when I recover I am here you know we're all here for each other to support each other whatever we go through um so uh it's it will be reciprocated if you ever need the support Lucia, thank you so much. And I just want to acknowledge again your courage and your calmness that we've seen as you've approached this certainly speaks to all that you've done behind the scenes to work with yourself. And as you mentioned early on, the anxiety and buildup of this. And you mentioned chaga uh, tea, the chaga mushrooms. And I want to remind people that Chaga is, it's C-H-A-G-A, -A, uh, Chaga mushroom, Chaga tea, one of the most powerful antioxidants and is being uh, suggested to keep yourself healthy as we kind of look through this, work through this coronavirus situation. So that's something that you can do for yourself and that of course you've been doing, uh, Lucia, to build up your own immune system. So we'll wait to hear from you again. A follow-up, we'll have you back on. And I want to thank those that joined us and commented. And uh, 
our blessings and our love go with you. So thank you so much for your honesty and sharing so much tonight with us. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Elsie. And thank you for everyone for, um, for tuning in and um, being here to support our show. Okay, so good night, everyone. Take care. And we'll look forward to having you back, Lucia. Have a great night. Right. <laughs>